Welcome to Stonefield Query's Knowledge Center, where we help you take the mystery out of reporting. This how-to video will show you how to create a quick report using Stonefield Query for ACPAC ERP. In today's lesson, you will learn how to create a quick report using the Reports Wizard. You will learn about the main report information, data selection, standard filter options, sorting options, formatting options, and security options. Let's proceed to the Reports Explorer for today's lesson. Let's create a new report. I'm going to click on the New button and the Report Types dialog comes up. Let's start with a quick report, so I'll choose OK. The Quick Report Wizard comes up. Step 1 is some information about the report. First of all, I'll give it a report name of My Sales Report. By default, Stonefield Query will put this report into whatever folder you had selected in the Reports Explorer, but of course you can choose a different folder from the drop-down list. I'll pick Reports instead. Next we choose the module we want the data for the report to come from. This shows a list of all the modules you have activated in ACPAC. I'll choose Accounts Receivable. Comments would be anything you want to see back in the Reports Explorer whenever this report is selected, and it usually contains information such as when the report gets run, how frequently it's used, things like that. So we'll just put in a simple comment, this is a sales report. Click on the next button. Step 2 is the big one. This is where we tell Stonefield Query what should appear in the report. And the thing to keep in mind is that we're going to tell it what we want, not how to go and get it from the database as you have to with other reporting tools. The first thing you notice is that we see nice descriptive names for all of our tables and fields. Names that are meaningful rather than those real table and field names such as ARCUS and ARIBTH. Let's start with customers. Uh, one of the things you'll notice with the customers table, as with other tables, is that optional fields actually appear right within the table. If you're familiar with how ACPAC stores optional fields, you realize that there are two different tables involved with keys and joins and so on. With Stonefield Query, we make those optional fields appear right in the table that you'd expect them to be. So it's very easy to query against optional fields, just as easy as it is with any other field in the original table. Let's start with the customer name, and we're next going to report on invoices. So here, we'll get the document number, the invoice date, and the document total including tax. If you're not sure what a particular field contains, you can always select the field and then click on the values button to see a list of distinct values for that field. Also, you might decide that you don't want to show all the tables and fields in ACPAC. If your database doesn't use all of the data that's available, you can click on the show only favorites button here and that will then reduce the number of tables and fields that are visible to only those that contain meaningful data. At any point as you're creating your report, if you want to see what the report will look like, simply hit the preview button. Stonefield Query will do a live query against your database and show the results in a preview window. So here's the results showing us the information that we've asked for. However, this report is not organized very well. There doesn't appear to be any kind of sorting or grouping, there's no subtotals and so on. So let's close the preview window and change a few things. The way that you change how a field appears in the report is either by double clicking it or selecting and choosing properties. Either way you get a properties dialog where you can control how this field appears, such as the column heading, the width, and so on. What I'm going to do with the customer name field is on the grouping page turn on group on this field. Because by grouping by the customer name we can see all the invoices for that customer together. I'm going to choose OK and we'll also change the properties for the document total field. That column heading is fairly wide, so let's go and change it to something simpler, like just total. On the format page, I want to turn on sum. That tells Stonefield Query that we want to see subtotals at each group break and grand totals at the end of the report. Let's choose OK and run the report again. And this time the report is organized the way we'd like it to be. Here are all the invoices for Acme Plumbing and the total, Bargain Mart, and so on. In order to run this report, Stonefield Query had to join two different tables. But you'll notice I didn't specify any join information anywhere, and nor did I need to. I don't have to know anything about the SQL language or joins or foreign keys. I simply tell Stonefield Query what I want, and it gives me the results that I need. It automatically knows how to join all of the ACPAC tables. Now the issue with this report is that it's showing every record in the entire database, which is not something you typically want. So let's close this preview window and go to the next step, which is filtering.
I'm going to click on the filter button. We'll add a condition. I'm only interested in those items that were invoiced in a certain date range. So I'll choose the invoice date field. You notice that we have nice English expressions for our operators. Equals, does not equal, is greater than, and so on. I'm going to choose is between because that's pretty handy for dates. I'm only interested in those items ordered in 2009. So I'll put in my date range. You can either type the date or choose it from a drop-down calendar. So I'll pick December of 2009 and pick the 31st. Now this would be fine. This would give me those items that were invoiced in 2009. But the next time I run the report, it might be a different date range that I'm interested in. And I wouldn't want to have to go and modify the filter condition all the time. So I'm going to choose Ask at Runtime. That tells Stonefield Query that I want to be prompted for the date range whenever I run this report. I'm going to choose OK. You can see our filter condition is a nice English expression here. We could add other conditions, but we'll just stick with this one for now. So I'll choose OK. When we run the report, because I turned on Ask at Runtime, Stonefield Query prompts me for the date range. We can either put in the uh, new dates, we can accept the default dates, we can even choose to ignore the condition for this particular run. I'm just going to choose OK to accept the default dates, and now we only get 29 records, and here's the result. And you notice the filter condition is shown again as a nice English expression here in the page header. We can also exclude records. For example, give me a list of all customers we didn't contact last year so that we can reconnect with them. The Databases button allows you to query against multiple databases at the same time. When you click on this, it brings up a list of the different ACPAC companies. I can choose additional companies. It will show the invoices from all of these companies on the same report. The next step is sorting. You can see that this report is initially sorted by customer name because that's how we grouped it. But within customer name, we could sort it by invoice date. You can change the sort to ascending or descending order. We can also have multiple levels of sorts. The next step is formatting. You can specify a header and footer for each page. In the case of orientation, automatic means that Stonefield Query will automatically change the orientation to landscape if it's too wide for portrait, a nice feature you don't find in other reporting tools. However, if you want to, you can force it to a particular orientation. Template's another nice feature. If I choose a different template, such as Ledger, and run the report again, and specify my filter condition, this time the report looks different. Now we see gray bands over top of uh, every second detail line, and dark boxes over top of the group headers. Templates are a nice feature that allow you to control the appearance of the report. We provide a number of built-in templates, but we also provide a template editor so you can modify those templates or even create your own custom templates. The last step when you're creating a report is security. By default, everyone has access to this report, but that may not be appropriate for all report types. So we can remove everyone from the list and indicate that, for example, maybe only managers have access to this report. Now that I'm done designing my report, I simply have to hit finish and that report gets saved in the Reports Explorer. And there's my report, ready to run whenever we need it to run. In today's lesson, you learned how to create a quick report using the Reports Wizard. You learned about the main report information, data selection, filtering, sorting, formatting, and security options. Thank you for watching today's presentation on how to create a quick report.